to my channel. This is a Q&A. This is Q&A Eileen. Eileen, it was Q&A. <laughs> Let me start that over. Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Eileen DeFriest and I'm here for a Q&A with my favorite people on the planet. Now the first one I'm going to start with, I'm going to start right in right away. But at first I'm going to say one thing that I always forget to say. Please subscribe to my channel. I need to grow my channel. I need to grow, grow, grow my channel. And follow me on Instagram. Now, the first um, questions I'm going to answer are from someone who had messaged me quite a while ago, and she asked me to please remember to answer some of these questions. It's for a couple named uh, Christina and Belle. Oh, Chris whoa, whoa, let me interrupt this program. I've got a special message for you from Provacan UK. Please stay with me for this short discussion, and I will return in a couple of minutes to your wonderful questions. Provacan UK is one of the leading, if not the leading, manufacturer and seller of CBD products. What are CBD products? They're wellness products. CBD stands for, it's an acronym for cannabidiol. What is cannabidiol, you ask? Well, I'm happy to tell you. Cannabidiol is, what is a phyto compound, which is a plant-based compound that's part of the cannabis sativa plant. What is the cannabis sativa plant? It's weed. <laughs> cannabis sativa produces phyto compounds, and among those phyto compounds is cannabidiol, hemp, the non-THC part of the plant, and THC is one of the compounds, and what that is is tetrahydrocannabinol. That's what THC stands for, and what that is, that's the stuff that gets you high. That's the psychoactive agent in weed in marijuana. And CBD products are fully regulated products. They have no THC in them. There are no psychoactive effects to be found in these products. So they're fully legal to sell in any you know countries that allow CBD products, products that, that originate in the cannabis sativa plant. The products I tested were two fantastic ones. Now this is my second time reviewing for uh, Provacan. And like last time, I had great success with these two products. These are two new ones that I've reviewed, new to me anyway. They're Provacan gummies. You see the beautiful gummies? They're 10 milligrams each. This container, this jar, is a total of 500 milligrams. And there, that means there are 50 gummies that come in here. Each is 10 milligrams. You can take two per day, that's 20 milligrams. I found that worked a treat for me. It made me feel a kind of veneer of smoothness and calm. And in these COVID-19 days, it has been a delight to have. I've been using these now for the past week. And I noticed after the first day and the second day, I could feel, really feel something. This has been terrific. Now, the other one I have is, was intriguing when I had first heard of it. It's called Provacan Isolate, and it's very small as you can see, and it is CBD in its purest form. This one has nothing else. It's just pure, pure CBD. And as such, it has enormous application. I was shocked to find out that you can use it. I used, the way I used it was putting it in tea at night so I could go to sleep. You can use it in tea, coffee, any kind of drinks, cocktails. You can also use it in cooking oil. You can use it um, as part of a topical salve. It just has an extraordinary range of applications that have a wellness quality to them that is truly, truly versatile. What I found with the tea was delightful. I'm one of those people that has a little trouble getting to sleep at night or in the morning. I sometimes go to bed very, very late. I have strange hours. So I sometimes like, say if it's getting light and I'm still up, I think, oh boy, I better go to sleep. Julia and the puppy and the cat are asleep. I should really get some sleep so I'm not on a crazy schedule. So this helped me over the past week to, to sort of regulate my schedule a bit more. And what it does for me is I take have a cup of tea before sleep and it helps me get to sleep more quickly than I would normally fall asleep. And more importantly, it helps me stay to sleep, you know, keeps me asleep, which is great. Again, it's not like you don't wake up in the morning and feel medicated. It's not medicated. It's just this very subtle calming feeling that it stopped my mind from racing. Not everybody apparently reacts to CBD, but I definitely do. And it's, again, it's not like you're getting high or anything, but it has been very useful for me. And since I first tried Provacan products, I've been using them since. 
And these two are, are great new addition. There's a discount code in the description right below the video. And I hope you give them a shot. Thank you so much. And thank you to Provocant for hiring me again. I really enjoy being a spokesperson for you. And have a lovely day. What's your daily life routine uh, like for, for, for myself and, and Julia? Well, it's um, with lockdown, it's funny because, you know, our lives, because we both work from home, Julia does go out of, out of the home to go to school and everything, and we do travel a lot. It's kind of day-to-day -day quite different, but sort of day-to-day -day quite the same. For us, being in lockdown, it's been no pleasure, of course, but it hasn't been so different from what our lives are normally, which are we kind of get up when we want. I sometimes have, have late, late hours because for some reason I'm a nocturnal creature. Me and my cat, Brittany, I think we're very nocturnal. So to answer that, it's hard to, hard to give a specific answer except to say that ours is not, listen, I've been on the earth a long time and I've lived a very, very, you know, formulaic life in the sense that Whatever kind of work I did, I was there, you know, from nine to five or whether I worked the evening, you know, I had a very regimented life. Um, Julia has been lucky enough to, you know, in her life, she knows what she doesn't want to do and that's work for others. And she's just so effortlessly creative that she's able to make a living, you know, from doing whether it's music and YouTube. And now she's almost done with her master's degree in songwriting. So it's pretty exciting. So we have a pretty flexible schedule, I guess you would say. And let's see what else. Um, how does Julia manage YouTube, university, and work? Well, her work is YouTube plus promotional stuff she does. Well, I don't know sometimes how she does it. Now we have a puppy. As you know, we have a cat and cats are, you know, not like raising puppies. So she's very, very busy. Um, she's slowed down a little bit recently in, in producing videos because you know, she's basically the sort of point person with the puppy, so she's doing most of the daily care. Not that I don't want to, but, you know, it's just it's just sort of, sort of easier that way. I kind of tend to the cat, and she's been tending to the puppy, but we all, you know, are together and everything. Um, but she's extraordinarily busy. She's one of those people who's does well when she's very busy. And I'm the other, I'm sort of the opposite way. I like things nice and slow for my, for my, myself. I like to set my own pace. She does too, of course, which is why she does the kind of work she does, but she, she can manage a lot. Um, do we argue a lot? We bicker. Julia and I definitely bicker, but we're not big arguers. I can say, and I don't think she'll mind me saying this, we had one argument during lockdown. And that was since we had the puppy and it was just a silly thing, but it wasn't an argument like we don't have a back and forth like we don't really swear at each other. I'm the one who loses my cool really easily because I have very thin skin and I come from a family. It's almost like it wasn't an Italian family, but it's a, it was a very emotional family and we would, you know, say things and, you know, be very verbal. Whereas Julia just is really chill. And it's not like she's chill, like holding things in so she's going to bubble over. She is just really chill. But, you know, there are things that each of us does that annoys the hell out of the other. You know, I am quick to react sometimes. She doesn't like that. But she, again, she's very patient. I'm very neat and ordered, believe it or not. And I'm very impatient sometimes with her, her not being like that. And the other thing about Julia, there's nothing wrong. She's not a slob or anything. She's certainly not dirty. Um, she just accumulates a lot of things. And, you know, and sometimes she'll set up to do some, some filming. And there'll just be so much stuff all over the place. And, you know, and I get impatient sometimes. And, you know, it's, I think we're quite fair with each other, though. For the most part, we're a low-conflict couple. I can tell you that from years of experience. So let me move on from you guys just to say, to answer one more question of yours, which was, who, who wears the pants in their relationship? I think Julia would probably say me, and I would probably say her, except she doesn't really, in the sense that she's... She's not bossy. She doesn't dictate anything. She's very chill. You know, I think we're pretty equal in terms of like socially and stuff like that. The way we, I mean, even though I'm much more voluble than Julia socially, I speak a lot more and everything. Um, but we're, 
we're not um, we're not so cut and dry like who's 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 the one in control and who's not. Julia's got a very firm sense of herself and a very firm line that she you know she doesn't want crossed as a person, which I totally respect. You know, as one always should respect in their partner. She's very very firm, but she's also very very easygoing. Um, so nobody wear, really wears the pants. You know, every relationship is different. We're not cut and dry in, in kind of anything. Thank you so much for your questions. Chris and Bell, and you take care of yourselves. Okay, now back to other questions. So give me a second to get to Instagram where a lot of you had questions. Okay, this person who's sent a question, they're in an age gap relationship. There are 39 years between her and her partner. I think they're a straight couple. She, uh, the woman is the younger one of the couple, and she wanted to know how we manage being in an age gap relationship. Did um, She said that they have some trouble, they get some trouble for being in an age gap relationship, and she wanted to know about our struggles. Did we get more guff, if you will, um, for being in an age gap relationship or for being lesbians? And interestingly, I would add misogyny to that. Julie and I have been knocked about a bit on social media. It's unfortunate, but um, but it's happened, and you know we have tried our best to move on, and and move on we have. We we make our videos, and, and that's what we want to do. We try to figure out where it's come from, and we can't help but think that it's a kind of a bit of everything. A lot of people who have been trolls of ours, you know, when I say trolls, people who just, you know, leave ridiculously mean comments. Some of them are a combination of jealous of Julia and I, jealous of our success, jealous of Julia's beauty, jealous of Julia, um, and jealous of me for for having a wife like Julia. In amongst all that, I find ageism, misogyny. A woman can be a misogynist. Don't for a second think they can. There's such a thing as a sort of benevolent sexism, where they put down their own sex uh, without necessarily thinking they're doing anything wrong. So we, what we experience is a, a whole across the board sort of thing. And that is, as I said, ageism, sexism, uh, misogyny. Fear is what makes people hate. It's what makes people reject. Okay, next. Somebody said, do you still have Brittany, I hope? You bet. Why would we not have Brittany? Oh my goodness. Brittany is here to stay. We didn't trade trade animals. We wouldn't do that. We love our animals. Uh, do you ever want children? Do you want children with Julia in the future? Well, you know, I'm 62. Um, if Julia wants to get pregnant, I mean, I'm all for that. You know, I'm, I'm all for it. We're so many years apart. She's going to go on and have a life after me, and, and she will make a marvel. She's, Julia's like pure love. You know, she just is literally just such a nice, loving, warm, and affectionate person. She's not perfect. Only I am. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she's not perfect, but she's pretty darn close. And it would be a shame to see, you know, for this person who's so lovely, loving and lovely to not have a little creature to, 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 you know, raise. I'd love to see her with a daughter. If she wants to get pregnant, you know, we will absolutely have that discussion and have it happen if, if that's something that we could uh, bring into our lives. I'm, I'm all, you know, I love kids. I love cats. I love dogs. I love people, some people. <laughs> and so it's possible, you know, Julia hasn't made any clear gesture in that direction. We've talked about it, but listen, we just got a puppy, so we're dealing with that for now. What was the reason I moved to the UK? This is a very good question, and I've answered it at times. I moved back to the UK because I could. And I moved back to the UK because I was in the middle of um, a drug dependency crisis. I got dependent on two medications, and that made me unable to live a normal life. And it made me lose friends, lose, well, not so much friends, but lose, it made me very isolated. It made me lose work. It made me lose touch with reality. And it was a really terrible time. I landed here in back in London, and I ended up having a seizure. And that was the turning point for me. It just so happened that it happened in England. It could have happened in America, but it happened here. And I was able, 
through the NHS because I'm a dual citizen. I have, you know, every right to be here. My mom was born and raised in Dublin. I'm a first generation Irish. So I am, you know, uh, a citizen here. So I was very lucky to be taken in by the NHS who helped me over a handful of years to become unaddicted and undependent. The UK saved me and I'm eternally grateful to them for that. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, there's a person who just said, uh, I just saw her message. She said she's a singer and she wondered who my favorite singer was. Well, it's a really good question. Um, as a youth, I was a huge Joni Mitchell fan. Now, Joni's not generally known for her. By the way, I just want to mention my lipstick again. I'm sure it's off and I look silly, but I'm not going to stop the video to reapply it. Um, because it'll just be off in a few seconds. Um, I think La Lady Gaga has a really great voice. I also really love Sia. Oh, Adele. I think Adele is so talented. She's someone who, more than anyone over the past bunch of years, has moved me. Just moved me so much. My beautiful friend Danny wrote, What is my dream? My dream is a big one. My dream is for human culture to heal itself. My dream is for the pendulum of human nature to swing back towards altruism, towards cooperation. And then on a more local level, my dream is for the pandemic to be resolved for however long it takes us to get a vaccine. I, I would like us to, you know, not see more death. Um, I have to stop for a second. Sorry. That's okay. How are you, baby? I'm good. Carry on, carry on. Did she do her walkies? Mm -hmm. Okay, so just a couple more questions. There are a ton of questions here. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another Q&A soon because I really do enjoy doing this. Oh, um, in terms of, uh, to get back to the dream, and a more local dream I have has to do with, with my life and with my wife and our pets that I want to live as long as I can and as healthy as I can so I can enjoy this extraordinary woman that I married and that our pets have, you know, have two parents. You know, I, I would like to live as long as possible and it's been really hard for me to face that I can't, I can't live forever, you know, and I know that sounds really silly, but that's true. But apart from that, I want Julia and I want uh, Brittany the cat, and I want Beverly the dog to have just the best life after I'm gone. I want them to have every joy and to not suffer. I want to see that their lives, you know, I would like to know that their lives will be, will be okay, you know, and that's what I want. You know, maybe on that note, I think I'll say thank you very much. Now, that wasn't a lot of questions. There are a lot more questions. I'm going to do another Q&A soon. Uh, thank you so much. You guys really make me think. Your questions make me think. I really like doing Q&As. Uh, I think I'll do more of them because I really enjoy talking to you and I really enjoy discussing things and I hope I haven't gone on too long. Anyway, I love you. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to my channel. Take good care of yourselves. Be well, be safe and healthy. Mm, lots of love to you.